Right, so we're on the corner of Dufferin and Wilson. In the North York Borough, which is also Ward 9, York Center. I just got off this bus right here, which is a 2013 Nova Bus LFS Arctic. Now, I didn't see those type of buses until 2014, the summer of 2014, which is the year after. Here comes another one. Yeah, I was on the express bus. This is the regular Dufferin bus. It's now heading on its way to Wilson Station. You know, it's funny, because that bus goes from Wilson Subway Station all the way down to Dufferin Gates which is where the exhibition is. So it wouldn't be a hassle to get from North York all the way down to Dufferin Gates. Now let's watch this bus leave as well. Okay, this honking sound normally bothers me. It doesn't bother me now because I'm I'm actually wearing AirPods, and you can see Yorkdale Shopping Center over there. If you're looking at the Hudson's Bay. I did film a video around here back in March. So I'll show my face now. Hey guys, so as I have already said, I'm, I'm in Ward 9, York Center in North York. And I'm out in a t-shirt right now because the temperature is 20 degrees centigrade which is exactly 68 degrees in Fahrenheit. So that being said, we're not done with the 20 degree weather just yet because we reached 20 yesterday and it's supposed to go to 21 tomorrow. Okay, this person's jaywalking. Not, a, not the safest thing to do, but whatever. So I'm gonna do something a little, oh, it's nice. I like how this uh, top of the fence is painted yellow. But they only painted like the top of their fence yellow. It looks, looks more like a golden ring to me. Wow, can't believe it. We're, we can still go out in t-shirts and it's already October 25th, six days before Halloween. Wow, that tree, look how yellow that tree is. I could stare at it all day. Yep, that's the beauty of fall. It looks like somebody takes a can of paint and then paints the trees yellow, orange, red. So in this video, I'm gonna do a bit of a walk around the neighborhood. We're in the Winston Park neighborhood right now. They're still building those condos. I feel like the construction there is never going to end because from what I can remember, they were like building it for at least a few years. I was in that neck of the woods exactly three years and one day ago, October 24th, 20, 2020, and I can remember seeing those condos being built. And there's a store, a furniture store that I've been to a couple of times called Of Things Past. I don't know how well known that store is. I know one of my neighbors knows about that store, but I don't think it's that popular. Can't be. I don't really like the neck of the woods around here, south of the 401 where Yorkdale Shopping Center is because it's easier to get lost in that neighborhood and they tend to really lack sidewalks. Here, it's harder to get lost. So this, uh, this neighborhood side street is called Winston Park. So it's not a very big neighborhood. It's strictly just the side street. And then north of Wilson, it becomes the Ancaster neighborhood. So Ancaster is basically like the, just north of Wilson, but you know, just like Winston Park. And this here is Anthony Road. 
And I think part of the reason why I want to do a, a walking video along a side street is so that I can look for some Halloween decorations, some cool decorations. Okay, this house is sure to attract some trick-or-treaters. I wouldn't call this full-blown decorating, but I don't know, those inflatables are can be pretty cool. But not many Halloween decorations around here. Some, sometimes when I go trick-or-treating, I encounter houses that really go full-blown. Like, not only do they have those inflatables, but they also add strobe lights, fog machines. You know, they, they really make their houses stand out. Yeah, this house mm, is probably not going to get many children, probably not this one either, because, you know, some of, some houses, some neighborhoods just don't go, just don't get many trick-or-treaters. Like, my old house did not get many trick-or-treaters. I think it's because it was on a, a dead-end street. But, you know, the... Okay, that's pretty good. But I say this because when you have like two or three pumpkins sitting out on your lawn and they're not, or sitting on your porch and they're not even carved like this one, you know, these people, they just buy themselves a pumpkin. Oh, there's a dog inside that house. I can see the sign there. They just buy themselves a pumpkin. They leave it on their porch and then they don't even carve it. I actually carved my, we, I bought a pumpkin today and I carved it just before I came out here. So it's been quite a busy early afternoon for me. But I think if you want to get more trick-or-treaters, I would recommend you guys carve your pumpkins and put a uh, put a candle in it. It's, recommend, it's not recommended that we use those battery candles because if we use real candles, it becomes more of a fire hazard, especially if people leave it unattended. Unattended. Gosh, this... I don't know why I have problems pronouncing that word. You can sort of see the 401 from here. I'm just gonna stick to Anthony Road. I know there's like a, a park over there called Anthony Road School Park. We'll get to that in a sec. By the way, I'm actually quite familiar with this neighborhood from first grade. Not that I have anybody who lives around here, but I did kind of, uh, I actually rode the school bus around here back then. Now I know it's, you guys may be thinking, well, I thought you went to that, I thought that the school you went to from JK to 08 is in Etobicoke. Well, it is, but I actually went to like a morning program somewhere else. It has to do with my autism, but it's a little personal, so I'm not going to really get into detail. And besides, as the fact that I would ride the school bus around through here, well, you know, it's kind of a long story. It didn't actually last very long, not because I didn't, I actually didn't like riding that, riding the bus every week because I would have a different driver than the kids would be, well, there would be some students picked up who have developmental disabilities. And, you know, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say. I mean, I can explain it thoroughly if I wanted to, but I don't want to, so that's all I'm going to say. I 
They sit. That's a nice sofa there. Somebody's probably throwing it out. Well, it's on somebody's lawn, so I could try sitting, sitting on it if I wanted to, but if it's on somebody's lawn, I don't want to go into somebody else's property. They're saying that Lambton, Baby Point, and I think Inglewood or East York, somewhere around there, is notorious for Halloween decorations. But, yeah, I should probably check it out. I do remember making a vlog around, well, I, may, I remember making a vlog near my neck of the woods last year, but there weren't many Halloween decorations. A lot of times, there's not as, some neighborhoods are just not very notorious for decorating. But I know a Baby Point neighborhood is, and probably Warren Park as well. In fact, Baby, Baby Point is quite a well-known well neighborhood. My sister-in-law had a friend who lived in that neighborhood before. So we're going to walk all the way to the end. And maybe drop into that park for a quick second. Okay, not literally, but, you know, this will not be the end. Somebody has a playground in their backyard. Well, somebody actually has a swing set. So that's, that's quite nice. Most of the houses here are single leveled and a basement. Just like a lot of the houses on Royal York Road. Okay, so we're walking in front of a, a place here called the Aptus Treatment Center. And I think Aptus stands for Achieving Potential Some... I forget what the T stands for, but the US stands for Using Services. You can sort of see the sign from here. Yep, I do know that place. I've never been inside it, but I'm not going to explain it all. So I think the way... Well, it says school bus loading, so, loading zone. So I think the way it works is that those uh, school buses, they could, like, go inside here, then they... It's kind of awkward, because they then have to loop around. Like, you can see a sign that says one way, but they have to make a very sharp turn, and then when they come out, they have to make a very sharp turn on the other side. This is just awkward. But, oh well, what can you do? Try not to crash into someone's car. Now, what that place is about, it's... It's, uh, technically... Somebody left dog shit on the lawn. Well, I mean, it's somebody else's lawn, so I guess... So it doesn't really bother me if it's private property. But anyhow, uh, that place is for people generally between ages 4 and 17 years old who cannot succeed in school, in a mainstream school, because they may have some developmental disabilities. I think the slogan for Aptus is something something with complex disabilities. I know complex disabilities is in the slogan, but there's actually multiple Aptus locations. Like this isn't the only one. I think there's one like not far from Yorkdale Shopping Center. So it's not too far from here. But there are multiple locations besides this one. But like developmental disabilities, that can include like physical, like cerebral palsy or 
intellectual disability, Down syndrome. Because, you know, some people just have those rare complex disabilities and because of that, you know, you just can't succeed. And education is very important because by law, we all have to be in school during our childhood until 18 years of age. But you gotta have a good education in order to succeed in life. And you can't really have a good education when you have developmental disabilities. Now, I don't really know if that's a, uh, I don't wanna be kind of racist or whatever or discriminatory, but I, I used to be afraid of people with developmental disabilities because that way their behavior is kind of strange and they kind of, you know, these people, they may like yell a lot or make, or kind of moan. And I was more sensitive when I was really young in comparison with now. I mean, I'm older now, I'm, I'm autistic, okay? But autism is basically, I just find autism is just a mental health thing or it's just a personality altering syndrome, but well, the, the, old, the other um, term for autism is Asperger's syndrome. I don't, I find the name is just kind of awkward because it sounds more like Asperger syndrome, ass hamburger syndrome. But some words sound strange. Sometimes even names can, names of people can sound strange and I kind of do feel bad for people with those weird names because I have a feeling that somebody's going to make fun of their name because it sounds so strange, especially if it's inappropriate. But you see, I can live a normal life just like everyone else. Okay, so it looks like somebody... There's a house that has been torn down. This looks so much like a bungalow. But uh, they're building another... They're either tearing down or replacing another house. I have no idea what they're doing. Now I do see a pathway in the distance, which a lot of dead end streets will have pathways like that, that'll like go right through parks. I know there's a, you may find some, I call them the shortcut paths. I know they have one of them in the West Mount neighborhood, which is in Etobicoke. And it cuts right through a school and a, um, tennis court well cuts also through like a park where there are tennis courts and there's also a swimming pool there i'm not talking about here i'm talking about there okay oh yeah by the way if you go south of the 401 i believe you end up in ward 15 but if you go south of the 401 and then west of the Barry go train line rail corridor then you end up in ward 12 okay the garbage trucks in the way let's not okay let's try not to be in the way of the garbage truck oh god really okay I I'm about to set foot on this pathway here, but I really hope I'm not trespassing. I suppose anybody can just walk right through here. Looks like they build a community garden over there. Ooh, look at that garage door. I'm not too crazy about black, but it does look very modern. 
Yeah, so this pathway basically takes you right onto Aptus Teaching Landscape. I'm a little too afraid to set foot on here because I have a feeling it's private property. Look at that, they build a greenhouse as well. Yeah, this park has it all. Playground, greenhouse. I have a feeling they also have a splash pad here too. Anyways, let's get out of here. I don't want anybody to bug me and ask me questions. I mean, I don't think it is private property, but I don't really want to take chances. Not if I'm like walking by with a video camera filming. I think it's best that we just let it be. I just wonder if there's any houses or bungalows around here that are really full blown decorated in this. Now Halloween can also be a bit of a safety issue because when you're going trick or treating, it's gonna be dark. So, you know, you don't wanna get hit by cars and also you can trip on stuff as well, especially if you're wearing a costume that hangs really, really low. Not to mention, I was at Canada's Wonderland Halloween Haunt on Sunday, just after I filmed my walking video in Vaughn, after I got off the GO train. You guys probably remember that from my community post, but I had a pretty good time. I think I like Halloween Haunt more than Winterfest, because last time I was at Winterfest, there was not much to do. There really wasn't. I was kind of bored. Halloween haunt, there's like a lot of mazes and whatnot. So those mazes are pretty cool, but I do remember seeing some strobe flashing lights in there, in at least one of them. And then when you come out of the cornstalk maze, there's actually someone with a chainsaw but I think they actually take the blade off the chainsaw. Like they probably, I think what they do is they buy a chainsaw from Home Depot or whatever. So it's technically a real chainsaw, but they take the blades off cause the blades are a real safety issue. So, you know, it's crazy. You come out of the corn saw, the, the corn maze, and then there's a chainsaw, somebody holding a chainsaw. Then during that corn maze, there was like some monster running after me and I was like okay I said hello so I you know I, I you see I was like doing this to them I was like come on okay okay you've seen me already now go but that monster just kept on following me and kept on scaring me I'm like okay you scare me once that's nice but can't keep following me but anytime I do encounter those weird monsters those people who are dressed up I just try to act friendly by giving them the peace sign. It's very hard to stay away from them. I could have bought myself a no boo necklace, but I didn't really bother doing that. So I just thought maybe it would make sense if I just act friendly. And if I do have to walk by them, then I just hold out the peace sign just to make myself look friendly. Oh, that's a nice bungalow there. Very nice bungalow. Now those strobe lights, I was thinking to myself, well, that's a safety hazard because some people are ep epileptic. I'm not, I'm not myself. Like fl uh, flashing lights don't really bother me. I mean, they can be annoying sometimes, but I don't have epilepsy, so it 
the flashing lights don't affect me, but they do affect some people. This is why they say, you know, they even put a warning sign. There's flashing strobe lights, so, you know, you do this at your own risk. Then I realized that some of the display that they have could be gruesome because I actually saw, I think just by the Yukon Striker, they call it Trick or Treat Street. There was a like a bathtub filled with like human flesh and there was like gored body parts that were bathing in the human flesh, which, oh my gosh, blood and gore is is something I don't like because it's gruesome. That's like the one content in video games that bother me. And then now come to think of it, exactly a year ago today, I made a video. I went to that uh, Don Valley Parklands, the lower Don Parklands for the first time. And I made a video there and it was a I think it was about 55 minutes ish long. And but I do know exactly a year ago today I had a cold. I don't have a cold this year, but I did last year. But it's a good thing I had a cold like during reading week because you know, at least I didn't have to be in college cuz you know, you don't really want to go to school when you're sick. I mean, it's a pity that I did have a cold during reading week because that's like the only opportunity where I can do the things I like to do. But if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be sick, I'd rather be sick during reading week than than the time I should be in school. I think after this, you know, I, I, I honestly do feel like going to Starbucks, getting myself Frappuccino, but you see, I'm because I'm a rewards member, I'm doing a challenge to earn extra bonus stars. Okay, somebody lives, that car lives right here. Oh, that's a nice car from the 70s. Very cool. And obviously it's in the color blue, but it's too light to get the, for me to get the good vibe. It's not my favorite shade of blue. Yeah, but, but anyhow, as I was saying, if I order a Frappuccino like two days in a row, I get extra bonus stars. Now I already have ordered three days in a row or two days in a row. I, I don't know. I don't remember. No, two days in a row, but this will be my third day in a row because I, I don't think you can earn bonus stars when you... I mean, maybe you could, but I don't think they count when you, like, order in one of those Starbucks locations inside of a retail or grocery store. Because you can't redeem... Because those locations, they're not like anywhere else. They're not very systematic. So let's say you go into a Loblaws or a Metro store, and you go to that Starbucks location that Starbucks counter inside of a store. Well, you won't be able to redeem your... There's only like one or two people behind the counter and you're not able to redeem your uh, stars, your rewards. So I don't exactly know how it all works, but I'm assuming that because I didn't... It says I didn't complete my challenge, even though I've ordered two days in a row, but it's... It probably didn't count because of the, um, the location I ordered it, ordered from. They do say at participating locations, and the non-participating locations include gro grocery stores and retailers. And I do know of a Starbucks that's nearby, and I'm, I'm going to drop in there after I end this video. Ooh, smells like a campfire. What a nice smell.
Very nice smell. I like how it all smells like campfire. Unfortunately, starting on Halloween, it's gonna turn really cold. We're gonna have daytime highs of six degrees, the mid single digits. And it's probably gonna like lock right on because you know, it's uh, we're almost in November and then when you get into November, it, uh, the seasonal temperatures are mostly like the upper, the mid or upper, upper single digits. So it's really gonna turn cold on Halloween and it can be a pity because not that I'm gonna go trick or treating, but you would probably have to, those kids probably have to wear their winter coats underneath their costumes. And you don't really wanna do that because when you go up to somebody's door, you wanna show yourself wearing a costume, but it doesn't really mean anything if you have to, if you're basically trick or treating in your winter coat. The way I would do it, I would wear, I would try my best to wear my winter coat or a dress up in layers uh, underneath my costume. Now I did have one costume, Halloween costume uh, in between years 2018 and 2020. And then I eventually outgrew it, but it didn't take very long for me to outgrow it. However, it kind of kept me warm because in 2018 it was it was like 14 degrees outside and I didn't have to wear a jacket if I'm because that costume kind of kept me warm I can imagine what it's like if it were 30 degrees outside you wouldn't want to wear it but it, the costume itself keep me warm and I like it when they make Halloween costumes like that so that way you could keep yourself warm and still have fun I still do have a Halloween costume and it's a zombie skeleton Maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll take a picture of myself wearing that costume. And I'll, the way I do it now is I celebrate Halloween during the day. It makes more sense to celebrate it in the evening because it's, you know, it's supposed to be dark. Halloween really has its meaning when it's dark, but if you celebrate it during the day, it kind of ruins the vibe. It's like when it rains on Christmas or if you have no snow on Christmas, the vibe, I don't like that because the vibe ruins. The vibe gets ruined. All right, so now we're entering the townhouses, street of townhouses and there is a pride flag on the door. We've got houses here, then townhouses on the other side. But yeah, maybe I'll just take a picture of myself wearing a Halloween costume and then I'll post it on my community post. Wishing everyone happy Halloween. If, only if I can remember that. I'll try my best to remember it. There are more important things that I have to do. You see, knowledge has has its own limits, because... Ooh, Scarecrow. Looks a lot like a Scarecrow there. Oh, look at that! It says, Boo! Just over there. Yeah, I like, I like that, um... I like when it says, Boo, because that's... Obviously, is the word you hear a lot at this time of year. Funny enough though, Halloween's not too far from Christmas, so these people are just gonna replace their Halloween decorations with Christmas decorations. I'm not gonna be one of them, although I do have Christmas decorations as well, but I'm gonna wait until December to start decorating. I'll just give my patio a period of respite. And besides, I don't like celebrating Christmas in November. Well, look at that. It definitely looks like fall out there. A lot of the leaves have changed its color. Although I would still say half of, 
half this tree is still kind of green and a quarter of this tree is still green. Oh yeah, another rule for trick-or-treating, don't do it by yourself. Go with somebody, just don't do it alone. Now it's, now over the years it was, I mean, sometimes I would do it with, with a friend, but most of the time I would do it alone because you see in 2016, like, I mean, not alone alone, but my mom would like take me out herself, but that would be it. 2016, I tried to invite people from who would come to my birthday party to join me up to go trick-or-treating with me. And I was very upset about it on October 3rd, 2016, because not because I would say everybody said no. One person actually was gonna go trick-or-treating with me, but then she actually um uh, she said, oh, sorry, Nikki, I can't come with you on, I can't go out with you on Halloween because, you know, I'm meeting up with someone else. Yeah, it was a pity. Things definitely did not work out the way I hoped. But life comes with disappointments. Oh, look at that. Very creative to set up gravestones. Okay, we'll, we'll just make this a quick inspection because I don't want these people to be suspicious. Like, look at this. You see this foot sticking out and the hand sticking out of the ground? That's just gruesome. But anything skip. Whoa, that thing hanging from a tree. The view of the internal organs. Yep, definitely gruesome. Now the skeleton. Nobody seems to realize this, but Halloween is also the best time to celebrate, or not to celebrate, but to study the skeletal system. Because when I was in grade five, I used to learn about the skeletal system, like the skull, which is on top of our head, and then ribs, uh, tibia, femur, which I think they're leg muscles, and then pelvis, which is our behind. They're all visible, but Nobody really wants to study anything because we all want to have fun. Only thing is though, I don't like when people say that Halloween is a holiday because technically it isn't because you don't get the day off. I mean, I know it's kind of special, okay? It's a little bit like Christmas. It's very formal, but you don't get the day off. However, they do celebrate, they do celebrate it at schools and a lot of places. I do plan on filming another walking video somewhere else after this one. Actually, I was thinking of um, filming a bus ride on the 512 St. Clair replacement bus. And I know exactly how I can get there. It's not too far. I mean, in comparison, it's kind of easy to get there. But yeah, I then have to f grab a thumbnail shot after I end this video. But I am back on Wilson. Whoa, that 96 is sure a popular route. Well, now that there's no more Line 3, 96 doesn't go all the way to Ellesmere Station anymore. I think it might, I think it might go as far as uh, Kennedy and Ellesmere. But it has almost nowhere to go. I mean, they did extend it to Ellesmere Station. And it goes as far as Humber College. So that's a really long way. But I think it now goes as far as Kennedy Ellesmere. Although I don't know Scarborough that well. Because, you know, I don't live there. It's too far.
but we've got a 165 which is Dufford North actually no no 165 uh, that's Weston Road North my bad my bad I was, I was thinking of the 105 I started so yeah I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you enjoy this uh, leave a like comment and subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for more more vids coming your way and bye-bye